sesame is one of our oldest cultivated crops. In recent years, it has gained ground in South Texas. In 2019, it is estimated that around 27,000 acres were planted here in the Rio Grande Valley. For a few years, sesame grown in the valley had few insect pests, and populations typically stayed well below management thresholds. Unfortunately, this has been changing over the past few years, and we are starting to see several insects become significant problems. One of these is the sesame webworm, also referred to as the sesame leaf roller or sesame capsule borer. It is a type of crambid or snout moth. The adults are cream to brownish moth with a wingspan of a little over half of an inch. The forewings have distinct zigzag lines while the hind wings are solid pale yellow. Adults feed on plant nectar, live around one week, and spend this time mating and locating host plants where the female will oviposit or deposit eggs singly on the underside of sesame leaves among other hosts. Eggs hatch in two to three days and larvae immediately begin feeding. These tiny larvae, less than a tenth of a centimeter long, will feed for 10 to 12 days, going through five instars, or molts, before reaching larval maturity. As larvae grow, they become green with black spots and have a dark brown to black head capsule. Mature larvae will reach one to one and a half centimeters in length. The larvae are the damaging stage as they feed on tender foliage, pods, and shoots. As their name suggests, they often web the top leaves and terminal portion of the plant to provide a protected location where they will feed, often destroying the apical meristem of the plant. The damage is easy to detect and is often full of little black balls of frass or excrement. If you pull this webbing apart, you will find one or more larvae feeding inside. In many cases, they can be seen between the stem and pods where they will bore holes into the developing pods and destroy the seeds inside. Once larval feeding is complete, they will pupate inside the web leaves or may drop to the ground and pupate in the soil. Sesame leaf rollers pupate five to six days, then adults will emerge and begin the cycle all over again. It is likely that there will be at least several generations in the valley, so sesame developing at different times may be infested. We do not have a lot of information on control of this pest in Texas at this time. Studies done worldwide have suggested that earlier planted sesame may not experience as high of levels of infestation as later planted sesame. This may be because several generations have built up, resulting in larger populations later in the season. This insect does have other reported hosts, including pigweed and other amaranth species. This means two things. One, sesame leaf roller will likely have alternative hosts when sesame is not available, meaning it will stay around in the valley year-round, and that weed control will likely play an important role in keeping webworm populations down in your sesame field. We currently do not have established thresholds for this pest. However, because they are feeding directly on flowers and pods, relatively low population can likely cause significant yield loss. Insecticide applications are currently the best recommendation for control. Now there are relatively few insecticides labeled for use in sesame at this time. Now we recently put out a small efficacy trial looking at two of the most commonly used insecticide for leaf roller control. That's Mustang Max and Prevathon. Now as you can see, all the chemicals we tested provided some control of sesame leaf roller although both Prevathon and Blackhawk resulted in fewer larvae and pupa than Mustang Max. While the higher rate of Prevathon, the 12 ounce per acre rate, provided better control than the 8 ounces per acre, it was not significantly different. 
As you can see here, Black Hawk also did a great job of controlling the sesame leaf roller, but at this time, it is not labeled for sesame. We do hope to put out another trial um, looking at both these chemicals and possibly testing another one or two. When spraying for this pest, please keep in mind that while they may be at the tip of the plant, they are also protected in that webbing. In addition, they may be feeding further down the plant and protected between the capsule and the stem. For this reason, contact insecticides may not be very effective and will require plenty of carrier and good pressure to penetrate that webbing and get the insecticides to where the larvae are actively feeding. Thanks for watching, and I would like to extend a thank you to Danielle Sakula, IPM agent and Webb Wallace consultant for some of the great pictures included here and assistance conducting the efficacy trial.